may or may not have picked up on this yet, but I'm not the most confident, brave, whoa, hey, look at me, I'm totally the best kind of person. I'm shy and nervous and self-conscious and a... <laughs> mess. There's a lot of bigger, important things that I worry about, but I'm just gonna talk about the stupid ones that'll probably make you think I'm just dumb. Gotta keep it upbeat and entertaining. I can't be creating swirling vortexes of existential crisis and self-doubt yet. Judge me if you want, but I mean, I can't help but be pointlessly freaked out about these things. I'm sure you've got your weird triggers too. Loud flushing toilets. I can't remember a single moment of my life where I haven't been scared of loud flushing toilets. It's just the fact that, especially if you're in a stall, you're locked in this tiny space with this solitary isolated toilet bowl, and it's always a gamble. Some toilets are really nice and quiet, and they just go... It's the frickin' biggest relief of my day when I think a toilet's gonna pull some ungodly sound out of nowhere, but it turns out to be practically silent. I get overwhelmingly happy. Probably too much to be considered normal anymore. But then there's the ones you flush, and all of a sudden you've just released Satan himself and a thousand tortured souls from the fiery pits of hell. Just... I go into mental breakdown stage. I can't, I can't even move. Have you ever seen the videos of like goats or some other animal where they just freeze and fumble over if they get startled? That's me, but I, I don't fall down. If I'm in a house where there's a bunch of extra room in the bathroom, I get as far away from it as possible, immediately. But again, if I'm in a stall, I have to end up just pressing myself against the door as much as I can and wait for it to end. Jaden, you bimbo, if you're so terrified, why don't you just leave the stall? <laughs> Uh, well, good sir. Have you ever noticed that bathroom stalls tend to mainly open inwards? That means in order to leave, you gotta step closer to the toilet. Um, no thank you. That's the opposite of what I want. I'd rather just be a frozen victim for 10 seconds. Why do factories even make loud flushing toilets anymore? Just make them all quiet please? I'm getting tired of pressing that dumb button and all of a sudden all the Jurassic Park movies start screeching at me at the same time. <laughs> slowly falling into insanity. Speaking of bathrooms, you know those public hand dryer things? The ones where you have to stick your hands in and it blasts air? I, I can't do those. I have this image in my head where I put my hands in and then some cyborg future handcuffs lock onto my wrists and I get kidnapped by a hand dryer. Like an evil bathroom transformer waiting for its next human victim. Well too bad you dumb hand dryer, you can't fool me! And speaking of hands, I am just on a roll with these transitions today. I'm self-conscious of them. No, I'm not just afraid of hands in general. That's chirophobia. I had to look that up. I have this dumb thing where my hands are always cold. Not just like, oh, your hands are a bit cold. They're frigid. It's so bad that I'm actually very nervous about shaking people's hands or giving high fives just because they're so cold. Whenever you meet someone new, you normally shake their hand. Well, I don't want to shake their hand if their first impression of me is going to be, Hi, I'm Jaden. Boom! I'm secretly an ice witch, and you've just been cursed with the power of a million ice cubes! How about instead of shaking hands, we just do finger guns? I like that idea much better. Like, we've all been in that situation where you have to say bye to someone, and it's like, well, shoot, am I supposed to shake their hand, or hug them, or whatever other confusing goodbye motion? Just do finger guns. Less confusion and contact. I'm sure the mysophobes can agree with me on that one. And with high fives, normally it's not that bad, but I still try to minimize it to the least amount of physical contact as I can. Someone goes, high five, and I just smack their hand as fast as possible. It's weird and noticeable sometimes, but trust me, I'm doing you a favor. What else can I be stressed about? Time limits in video games. The less amount of time, the worse it is. I just can't stand the feeling of a constant, you better hurry up and complete your mission, you only have a limited amount of thinking time, every action you do that has no impact on furthering your path is a mistake, you're doing everything wrong and your inevitable punishment is steadily approaching, even in Mario. I mean, it doesn't affect me too much because the timer is up in the corner and not in your face like some games, and there's typically a lot of time, but as soon as that music gets faster, oh boy, everything just got intense. Oh, 
I'm in trouble now. Time to sprint. No time to look for secrets or nothing. I'm about to have an aneurysm here. Our lives are a time limit when you think about it. Back when I was a kid, I had this Game Boy Advance SpongeBob game. And for the second level, you had to get SpongeBob to the top of Sandy's treehouse by hopping up branch platforms. But the thing was, there were bird baths scattered around, and you only had a limited amount of time to get to the next bath before SpongeBob dried out. I was so scared of running out of time, I never got past the level. I stood at the bottom just sitting in the bath, occasionally stepping out only to get extremely panicked to see the time start ticking down and hop back in. I really want to play that game again. I've gotten better at video games since then and I kinda want to experience the other 95% of that game. Okay, so since I have zero self-control when it comes to video games and nostalgia, I, <laughs> I went out <laughs> And I bought the game. <laughs> I bought the game again because I wanted to play the level and prove to you that I can beat it. So, yeah. I'm just gonna... <laughs> I have my Game Boy and I'm gonna play the level. <gasps> Look at this nostalgia, though. I haven't played this in how many years? At least ten. Oh my god. <laughs> What am I doing? This is one of those games where it didn't even save your progress. You had to enter a password. Oh my god. The pressure's on, actually. Look at this. It only gives you 20 seconds. What the heck? That's pressure at the max. Alright. Oh, look at Spongebob. And then you get, like, the spatulas. People are gonna say, get the- Hey, it's Ari! Thanks, Ari. Should I become a gaming channel? This is totally gaming channel status. Oh no! <laughs> Just kidding. And, alright, see? Dang. Hot and cold. I don't know what my problem is here. I've just never liked it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hot and cold is a game where you try to find something based on audio hints other players give you. Cold means you're farther away. Hot means you're getting closer. So basically, you're walking around aimlessly while other people are screaming at you. That's how my mind interprets it anyway. I can't cope with the constant input from people based on my every action, and it gets worse when I'm getting closer. With every step, people are getting more and more intense at me, and I feel like something's just gonna pop up out of nowhere and... Uh, stab me? You're getting warmer. You're hot. You're steaming. You're on fire. You're in a volcano! You're- Stop! You're freaking me out! I can't handle all this intensity! I just want to run away back to the cold area. It's calm over there. It's chill. Last one I'll talk about here. Before YouTube, and even since I was a kid, I've always been self-conscious about my voice. But for different reasons. When I was young, somehow I started believing, Wow, my voice is really low compared to other girls. People are gonna think I'm a boy. That one didn't make too much sense. I don't know how I came to that conclusion. I don't believe that one anymore. But recently it's been more of, my voice is weird and awkward and mumbly, and I don't like it. I'm really reserved, so I think since I never did much talking, my voice wasn't able to develop as much and get as strong as it could be. It's funny, when I first started making videos, when I had to sit down and record, which back then only took like 15 minutes, which like, pfft, I wish it only took 15 minutes to record audio now. But even after those recording sessions, my throat would hurt and end up being really sore because I wasn't used to talking that much for that long. It was kind of pathetic. But now it takes literally six hours to get my audio done, so I've come a long way. I've been swaying back and forth between being self-conscious and just being okay with my voice because I still think it's a bit too mumbly and weird, but I've been reading some comments like, oh Jaden, I really like your voice, which I mean, thank you. But I, I don't really see it. But I, if, if you enjoy it, then I'm glad. My vocal cords say thank you. Thank you. There's a bunch of other things I wanted to talk about that I didn't get to mention, like phone calls. I can't really handle phone calls. This day and age, people seem to only call if they need something or along that line, and I just think, what do they need? What are they gonna ask me? What if I don't have an answer? What if I waste their time? I don't know what they want from me. The possibilities are endless. Oh my god! And then I end up not picking up the phone. <laughs> I just freak myself out. Also, eating food in front of people. I know that one's a bit more common, but I'm really like self-aware about that too. I feel like someone's gonna judge me on what I order and how I eat it and other nonsense that practically no one does. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm a freak for being nervous about so many things. Maybe I'm not. I don't really know anymore. Talk to you later, bye. I'm doing finger guns.